We present The Toff and the Runaway Bride, a radio serial in six parts, dramatized by Roy Lomax, based on the novel by John Creasy. Starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dorning as Johnny. Part 5. Motive for Murder. Here we are, Mr. Rollison. Oh, thanks for bringing me home, Inspector. It's certainly quick about police car. Time's important, and you must have a few things to do before you fly off to Paris. Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. Yes. I just hope I'm doing the right thing. Well, we did agree the unofficial approach may be best in this case. I hope so. But you will keep in touch when you get to Paris. I will. Any news? Any scrap of information? I promise you, Inspector. Yes. Remember, I can't give you more than 12 hours. After that, it has to become official police business. Superintendent Reno will make sure of that. He will, Mr. Rollison. You can depend on it. He's not happy about you going to Paris anyway. He doesn't trust you. I really must do something about this reputation of mine. But you can see his point of view. You've led him a bit of a dance. Oh, for the best of reasons. Maybe, but he doesn't know you as well as us at the yard. <laughs> yes, you're right, of course. Uh, when this business is over, one way or the other, I'll go down to Winchester and see if I can make my peace with him over a pint or two. That sounds like a good idea, Mr. Rollison. Well, Inspector, I better be moving. There's a lot to do, and uh, Johnny will be wondering where I've got to. The best of luck in Paris. Thank you. And remember, 12 hours. Yeah, I won't forget, Inspector. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Rollison. Only 12 hours, sir? Yes, Johnny. If I haven't come up with anything in that time, well, please take over. But, sir, it's so little time. I agree. You intend to follow your original plan, sir, to make inquiries about the murdered Mrs. Rose Lessing? Of course. That's why I'm going to Paris in the first place. And hopefully to help Barbara and Guy Lessing. Uh, why did they have to leave the country and so furtively? That would seem to complicate matters. Well, it's more than that, Jolly. I mean, they're possible murder suspects. They're certainly heavily involved. Well, to the police, it's virtually an admission of guilt. But if they are flying to Paris, sir... Well, that was the report... But they're in a private plane, Johnny, so we can't be absolutely sure where they're going. You know, sir, I think we should assume your visit to Paris may be a little extended. Yes, I'm sure it will. May I suggest an overnight bag as a precaution, sir? Oh, good idea. And will you require me to accompany you, sir? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Oh. I'm sorry, but I really do need you here to keep an eye on things in London. Of course, sir. I've never known a case in which one thing followed another so quickly... It has to come to the boil soon. I would say it already has, sir. After all, two murdered women, an attempted blackmail... You're not forgetting Holy Joe. Precisely, sir. Now there's a mystery. How is it possible for you to have seen Holy Joe twice in the last day or so when the police believe his drowned body has been in the river for at least three or four days? As you say, Jolly, a mystery. Indeed, sir. Yes, it gets more and more curious. Uh, which reminds me, sir, uh, something I'd like to find out before I go to Paris. Can I help, sir? No, no, but I think I know who can. Yeah, I won't be in it, Johnny. Uh, five seven one six. Hello, Aunt Gloria. You sound preoccupied. Oh, it's you, Richard. What is it? I said you sound preoccupied. Your mind is elsewhere. Yes, I'm in the middle of a good times crossword. Uh, what do you want? A, a favour, if you would. Ah, oh, I might have known. Wait a minute. You can do one for me first. If I can, delighted. Four-letter word, beginning with T and ending with S. Hmm? Oh, of course. Toff. In the times crossword. Really, Richard. No, oh, that's it. Turf. Good. Now I'm with you. You're sure? Of course. Now, this favour... Uh, well, information, actually, uh, about Barbara Lessing. What do you want to know? Well, I've known Barbara a long time. She's wealthy. I've always accepted that fact. No reason to question it. But, well, I've been wondering if there's anything at all in the financial background that might be useful. I don't quite understand, Richard. Well, where does the money come from? I mean, just how wealthy is she? You know what I mean. 
Well, her father is a very rich man. Oh, I know about Robert Lorne, but has Barbara money of her own, or is she dependent on her father? I really don't know, Richard. Well, you could find out. I suppose so. There is someone I could ask, casually, in the course of conversation. It does happen to be rather urgent. Really? I'm afraid so, Aunt Gloria. All right, Richard. Give me an hour. You couldn't make it half an hour. My dear boy. Please. I'll do my best. Bless you. I'll be round in half an hour. Goodbye, Richard. Goodbye. Jolly. Coming, sir. Yeah. Just a thought. Um, don't let me leave for Paris without the skeleton keys, will you? No, sir, but... Uh, eh, yes? It's hardly my place, sir, but... But breaking and entering in France, have you considered the possible consequences, sir? Jolly, I'm going to Paris to ask about Mrs. Rose Lessing. I'll be talking to neighbours, anyone who can help. Naturally, sir. We know nothing about the woman other than what we learned from her passport. But it's vital I find out as much as I can about her and Guy Lessing. I have to get into a flat, house, whatever it is, in the Rue de Gaspard by any means, so don't forget the skeleton keys, will you? No, sir. Oh, good man. Uh, the thought did occur to me, sir. Yes, Johnny? Major Lessing's friend is in Paris at the moment, is he not, sir? Attorney Carruthers, yes. Yes, I'd like to get in touch with him if I can. Do you think the Lessings will try to contact him? Well, it's a possibility, if they've really gone to Paris. I just wondered, sir. Uh, look, Johnny, I have to nip over to see Lady Gloria. You must keep an eye on the time, sir. Yeah, how long before the plane leaves? A little over two and a half hours. Oh, well, I won't be gone more than half an hour or so. Very well, sir. In the meantime, I shall finish packing your bag. Good. And I trust you will find Lady Gloria in the best of health, sir. I hope so, Johnny. You know, Richard, I must confess, but in one respect, you haven't changed since you were a little boy at prep school. Oh, now, really? You're as persistent as you ever were. When you make up your mind to get something you want... I can always depend on you for support. I know, and I'm grateful, Aunt Gloria. Well, um, did you find out anything for me? You gave me very little time, Richard. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry, but you did find something? Yes, and not in great detail, but I don't know how much you need to know. I'm not sure either, but... At this moment, anything that helps to fill in the background to this affair. So, fire away, will you? Well, we both know Robert Lorne came over from Australia with little more than the clothes on his back. Well, he's done very well for himself, and you have to admire a man who makes his own success. I agree with you. And it helped to marry a rich woman, one of the Heatherleys. <whistles> That's right. She was Barbara's mother. I never knew her. She died when Barbara was very young. And guess what, Richard? No, 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 you tell me. Apparently... Barbara was her mother's sole inheritor. For everything? Apart from a few small bequests. The whole lot went to Barbara. Lucky girl. What about her father? Well, he was relatively wealthy by the time he married. He wouldn't need the money. But you don't think it's strange that some of the money didn't go to him? Not really. There was nothing, well, well no strain between Barbara's mother and father. Oh, I really wouldn't know, Richard. I met them from time to time. Hardly the ideal of marital bliss. But a reasonable marriage, as far as I knew. Mm, I just wondered. I think you're looking for something that isn't there. And Robert certainly didn't depend on his wife's money. Well, at least I know Barbara is very wealthy and where it comes from. I haven't quite finished, Richard. But there's more? Barbara's inheritance comes in two parts, as it were. How do you mean? She received the best part of a quarter of a million pounds on her 21st birthday. <laughs> I went to her 21st party, yeah. I thought at the time it was rather extravagant, but I never realised she was worth that much. You wait. The rest of her inheritance is due one month after her marriage. One month? The will is quite specific, according to my, um, informant. Now, who is your informant, by the way? Oh, Richard. Would you reveal your sources of information? <laughs> Point taken, Aunt Gloria. And uh, how much does Barbara get this time? Now, my informant puts it at two million, a give or take a pound or two. I can't take this in. You're, you're telling me that in one month's time, Barbara will have control of two million pounds. Frightening, isn't it? And it belongs to her totally to dispose of as she wishes? Yes. And at the moment? It's in trust, of course, as it has been since her mother died. And the trustee? Her father, naturally. Yes. Um. What is it, Richard? Well, I was just thinking, if Barbara died... Oh, heaven forbid. Yes, but if Barbara did die... After she'd been married for one month, all the money would go to Guy. I suppose so. Unless she'd made a will to the contrary. Yes. You know, I agree with you, Aunt Gloria. What? It is frightening. I wonder if Guy Lessing has any idea of all this, the amount of money involved. Well, that's a question I can't answer, Richard. But you got hold of all this information within half an hour, sir. Be fair, Richard. 
Barbara may have told him about this herself. But if she didn't, he could still have found out, much as you did. Well, yes, I suppose so. Oh, I feel I haven't really helped you with all this. Of course you have, and I'm very grateful. Doesn't make things easier for you, does it? These people are your friends. Oh, Gloria, it's the truth that counts, friends or not. It's why I came here. And why I'm very grateful for all you've been able to tell me. Constable. Yes, Lord. Is Inspector Ellaby in? I've just gone to his office, Lord. Right. Come in. Uh, got a query from the mortuary secretary, Inspector. What's that, Sergeant? Uh, the body of Rose Lessing, Herald Mews. Yes. Uh, what do they do with it? Eh? Uh, after the coroner's court. It'll be fairly straightforward, won't it? Death caused by persons unknown. I should imagine so. Uh, what are the funeral arrangements, sir? Uh, do we send the body back to Paris? No, I don't think so. Oh, but they need to know, sir. They'll have to wait, won't they? Her next of kin's her husband, Major Lessing, and he's missing. What shall I tell the secretary? Look, Sergeant, the Toff's flying over to Paris to see what he can find out about this Rose Lessing. He may come across some relatives or friends. He'll be in touch with us, then. He will. Now, you tell the mortuary, as soon as we have any news, we'll pass it on to them, OK? Yes, sir. And you can tell them I'm expecting to hear something before the day's out. Right, sir. All right, Jolly, it's me. Thank goodness, sir. I tried to telephone you at Lady Gloria's, but you just left. Oh, what is it? Several telephone calls for you, all from the same gentleman. That must be important. Anyone I know? I couldn't say, sir. But the gentleman did say it was extremely urgent that he speak to you before you leave for Paris. There wasn't Mr. Law. Oh, no, sir. It must be the police, then. No one else knows I'm going to Paris. Quite possibly, sir. He, um, he didn't leave a number for me to ring. I did ask, sir. But he said he preferred to contact you. Yes. Still, I hope he's quick about it. I ought to be leaving for London Airport. I don't want to cut it too fine. Indeed not, sir. Incidentally, I trust your visit to Lady Gloria proved worthwhile. It wasn't a wasted journey. I picked up some useful information. I'm pleased, sir. Yes, it was all very interesting. But not to Major Lessing's advantage, I'm afraid. Really? Yes. In fact, it rather confirms him as the villain of the piece. Ah, uh. Forgive me, sir, but... Uh, yes, Charlie? Well, Major Lessing is a personal friend of yours, sir. But have you considered that, unpleasant though it may be, the facts in this case may be the truth? I'm sorry, sir. No, no, Jolly, you're right to mention it. it it's difficult, but objectivity at all costs. I think so, sir. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Rollison's residence? Has he got back yet? Oh, yes, sir. Mr. Rollison has just come in. One moment, please. It's the gentleman who rang earlier, sir. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Uh, hello, it's Richard Rolleston. You haven't left for the airport yet? <laughs> well, obviously I haven't. Good. Uh, hello? Yes, Mr. Rolleston. Uh, you're ringing from Scotland Yard? Oh, no. Well, are you connected with the police? Oh, not me, no. Well, who the devil are you? Uh, no names, Mr. Rolleston. Let's just say a friend. Well, go on, what do you want? Are you in the market for some information? Well, that depends. It's all good stuff, I promise you. I'm listening. Worth a few quid, I should think. Yeah, well, we'll see. Yes, I reckon, what, 50 quid in exchange for information about Major Guy Lessing. Major Lessing? What the... Well, what do you know about him? Well, not over the phone, Mr. Rollison. All right, you can come and see me here. No, you come to me. It'll be safer that way. And you can bring the money with you. Oh, very well, where do I go? Do you know the Goat and Compass pub down Waterloo Road? I can find it. Right. I'll see you there, saloon bar, just before three o'clock. Oh, no, no, that's impossible. We'll have to make it sooner than that. Can't be done, Mr. Rollis. Oh, why not? Well, you know, things. I've got to be careful. Oh, this is very difficult. Uh... I, I promise you, it'll be worth your while, Mr. Rollison. It's something you ought to know if you want to help your friend. Very well, I'll, uh, I'll meet you at the Goat and Compass. You won't regret it. I hope not. How will I recognise you? Oh, don't you worry about that, Mr. Rollison. I'll know you all right. I'll come and speak to you. When it's safe. You seem to be a very cautious gentleman. And why not, Mr. Rollison? Two women strangled. And then what happened to Holy Joe? I'm not taking any chances. No. Well, I'll see you at the pub just before three. That's right. And don't forget to bring the money. Well, did you hear any of that, Johnny? Yes, sir. It means a change of plan, I'm afraid. But you'll miss your flight to Paris. It can't be helped. 
Oh, must you really go to meet this man, sir? You know nothing about him. I can't afford not to meet him, Jolly, if he knows something that will help Major Lessing. In that case, sir, I shall arrange to book you on the next flight to Paris. Yes, I might just make it. There is one thing, sir. Ah, yes, Jolly? Did you, by any chance, discover how this gentleman knew you were flying to Paris today, sir? The same thought crossed my mind. And that's the first question I'm going to ask him when we meet. Drink up now. Time to shut up shop. Time, gentlemen, if you please. Sorry, mate, but we're well past closing. Hey, look, is that the right time? No, it's a few minutes past, you know, pub clocks. No, it's more like quarter past three. You sure there's been no one else in here? No, like I said earlier, you're the only one in the saloon bar since, well, before half past two. Well, there hasn't been a phone call or a message. No one rings up here, mate. Look, would you check, please? My name's Rollison. Hey, Charlie, any calls for a Mr. Rollison? No. Hey, sir? Any messages for Mr. Rollison? No. Sorry, mate. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, it's all right. Now, if you don't mind, mate, I'd better shut down. I'll be losing my license. Yes, Jolly, I am annoyed. Very annoyed. I've wasted the best part of an hour, an hour and a half on a wild goose chase, quite apart from missing the flight to Paris. But as you said, sir, it was important to meet the gentleman. His information may have been valuable. Yes, I know. And you've had no phone calls, no messages? No, sir. Oh, well. Hmm. Do you think I'll catch the next flight to Paris? Uh, you were able to change the first booking. Indeed, sir. But I doubt you will make it in time. Mm, that's two flights. I mean, that's a damn nuisance. May I suggest, sir, that you drive immediately to London Airport, and in the meantime, I will telephone for a new reservation. Yeah, that's a good idea, Johnny. Yes, I'll pick up the ticket when I get there. Everything you may require is packed. I've put your overnight bag in the boot of the car, and, oh, your passport, sir. Uh, thanks, Johnny. Well, um... You get on the blur to the airport, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. And the very best of luck, sir. Thanks, Jolly. I'll certainly need it. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, what is it, officer? You the owner of this car, sir? Yes, that's right. May I see your driving license, please, oh, sir? Oh, certainly. Yes, just a minute. Uh, there we are. Thank you, sir. Officer, I am in rather a hurry. Is this going to take long? Mr. Richard Rollison. Uh, yes, that's my name. But can you Would tell you me... step outside the car for a moment, sir? It's always really necessary. Well, I'm sure you want to cooperate, sir. Of course I do. Uh... <laughs> Very well. Are you driving to London Airport, sir? Uh, yes, I am. A meeting someone or leaving the country? I'm flying to Paris, if I'm lucky enough to reach the airport. You don't seem to have any luggage, sir. Uh, just an overnight bag. It's in the boot. You won't mind if I take a look, sir? Officer, if it will make you happy and get me on my way, by all means. Now, there's the bag. It's unlocked. Have a look if you want to. That well, won't be necessary. Ah. What have you got in this sacking? No idea, officer. I can't say I've ever noticed it. Let's have a look. If you don't mind, sir. Certainly. Go ahead. Huh. Not done up too well, is it, sir? No, whatever it is. Ah. Now, there we are. Well, sir. Well, what do you want me to say? Does this painting belong to you, sir? No, it doesn't. I've never seen it before. Then how do you account for it being in the boot of your car? I can't. It's a mystery how it got there. I'm sorry. I can't help you. I have reason to believe that this painting is a valuable work of art and stolen property. Officer, you can't be serious. I mean, I've been far too busy to run around stealing paint. I'm sorry, sir, but I must ask you to come down with me to the station. Is that absolutely necessary? I have a plane to catch. I'm sure you have, sir. It's essential I get to Paris as soon as possible. Well, that's going to have to wait a while, sir. At least until you've answered a few questions down at the station. Felton, please. Duty, Sergeant. Uh, this is Mrs. Kershaw. Oh, yes, madam. Uh, still no news about your Yorkshire Terrier, I'm afraid. I, I did tell you he was wearing a bow, a, a red one. Yes, madam, I've got all the particulars. You will get in touch with me? Yes, we'll let you know as soon as we hear anything. Look, Sergeant, I don't want to sound unreasonable. Uh, just one moment, sir. Anybody in CID office? We'll be back in a couple of hours or so, Sergeant. Right. 
Now, sir, you were saying... It's imperative I get to Paris as soon as possible. It really is. If you say so, sir. Look, I know nothing about that painting. How the devil it got into my car, well, I just don't know. Yes, sir. Look, Sergeant, you have my name, you have my address. I don't expect to be in Paris more than a day or two at the most. When I get back to England, I'll give you my word. I'll come straight here and see if we can't make some sense out of all this. I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to see the CID inspector. But he's not here. Uh, no, sir, but we're expecting him in the next few hours. Oh, my... Look, Sergeant, I, I can appreciate your position, but will you please telephone Inspector Ellaby at New Scotland Yard? Well, I don't know. He uh... knows me. He knows why I must get to Paris. Well, I... But please, I... Sergeant. You say his name is... Ellaby. Inspector... Uh, Ellaby. Extension 333. Extension 333. Well, not please, will you call him? I'll think about it, Mr. Rollison. Oh, and may I make a personal telephone call? It is important. Oh, very well. Uh, thank you, Sergeant. Yeah, I'll be happy to sit in one of your cells if you ring Inspector Ellaby for me. It's me, Jolly. But, sir, you should be on the five o'clock flight. Yes, it's just not our day, Jolly. I'm being held at Felton Police Station. Good gracious, sir. Is there anything I can do? Oh, no, you can leave that to me. But uh, would you go out to the airport and wait for me there? Certainly, sir. Good. You expect to be at the airport, sir? I'm very hopeful, Jolly. But keep your fingers crossed. I will, sir. Well, see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Well, Sergeant, if you'll be kind enough to make your telephone call, I'll accept the hospitality of your station cell. All right, Constable, let's be having him. Well, Mr. Rollison. Inspector Ellaby, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? I've seen everything now. The toff locked up in a police cell. It's a new experience. Yes, and a very frustrating one, I can assure you. Well, what's the situation now? I've had a word with the CID, and, well, you're a free man, Mr. Rollison. That's a relief. When the sergeant rang, I thought I'd better come over myself and find out what was going on. That's a long story, Inspector. You can tell me all about it in the car. Yeah, but I must get to London Airport. That's where I'm taking you, Mr. Rollison, if you've no objection. No, none at all. I'm grateful. I want to see you on a plane to Paris, and I'm going to make sure you get one without any more delays. And this man you were supposed to meet at the pub, you've no idea who he was? No. Funny, him not turning up. What an inspector. But if he was selling information about Major Lessing... I wonder. What do you mean? Inspector, this painting the police found in my car, how did they know? The local police had a tip-off. A phone call, I suppose, giving my car registration, etc. So I believe. Anonymous, of course. They had to follow it up, Mr. Rollison. <laughs> I might have guessed. Could be coincidence. A couple of practical jokes. Oh, come on, Inspector. You don't really believe that. Well... And you're not providing this personal escort for fun, are you? Now, be honest. All right, Mr. Rollison. No, I don't think these delays were accidental. So, we agree. Someone is trying to stop me from getting over to Paris today. It looks like it. Yeah, but why me? I wouldn't know, Mr. Rollison. But time's important as well. The sooner we get you onto that plane for Paris, the better. Oh, that reminds me. I'm expecting Jolly to meet me at the airport. Fine. We'll look out for him when we get there. Are you sure there are no messages from Mr. Rollison? No, sir. Oh, dear. I do hope nothing has happened. Sir? Oh, it, it's quite all right, miss. Uh, thank you very Jolly. much. Ah, Jolly. sir, thank goodness you've arrived. Yes. I was beginning to worry. It's all thanks to Inspector Ellaby here. Good evening, sir. Good evening. I've been making one reservation after another, sir. But the next flight, I'm afraid I've been unlucky. Oh, don't worry, Jolly. It's all right, Mr. Rollison. I'll get you on it. If you just hang on here... Uh, of course, Inspector. Well, Jolly, uh, anything to report? No, sir. Any phone calls, messages? Nothing at all, sir. So our mystery caller didn't try to contact us again, eh? It would appear not, sir. Mm, I'm not surprised. Though, I did see something here, sir, that you may consider of some importance. Really? Yes, sir. Whilst I was waiting for you, I noticed a familiar face among the passengers on an earlier flight to Paris. Yes? Well, who was it? Mr. Robert Lawn, sir. Barbara's father? Well, did he see you? No, sir. I thought it better to remain inconspicuous. Yes. Now, I wonder what Robert Lawn is doing over in Paris. It did occur to me, sir, that all the principals in this case are now in the French capital. Hmm. 
Oh, very interesting, don't you think? Indeed, Mr. sir. Mr. Rollison. Oh, Inspector. It's all arranged. Here are your tickets. Uh, two tickets? Yes. I thought it would be a good idea if Mr. Jolly went with you. Mm. A splendid idea. But would that be convenient, Jolly? Indeed it would, sir. Oh, uh, uh, passport, Jolly. <laughs> I took the liberty of bringing it with me, sir. Just in case. Oh. Well, Mr. Rollison, I really think you ought to be moving. You don't want to miss another flight. Uh, thanks for all your help, Inspector. Please keep in touch. And the best of luck in Paris. Oh, thank you. Le vol d'Air France numéro 950 en provenance de Milan via Nice va atterrir avec quelques minutes de retard. There seems to be a small queue for taxis, sir. Oh, we won't have to wait too long. Do you intend to book in at the hotel first, sir? Uh, no, no, Jolly. Our first call is number 37, Rue de Gaspin. The flat of the murdered Mrs. Lessing. That's right. If we don't start there, we don't start Attention. anywhere. Monsieur Rollisson de Londres est prié de se présenter au bureau des informations où on le demande au téléphone. Attention, will Mr. Rollisson of London please come to the information desk where he is wanted on the telephone? Well, I wonder what that's about. Perhaps a call from London, sir. From Scotland Yard. Let's find out, Joey. If you will allow me, sir. Oh, by all means, Jolly. Uh, pardon, s'il vous plaît. Oui, monsieur. Uh, voici le Mr. <laughs> Pardon. Uh, Monsieur Rollinson de Londres. Oh, eh bien, Monsieur Rollinson, on vous demande au téléphone, à la cabine numéro 3. Ah, uh, merci beaucoup, Monsieur. Je vous en prie, Monsieur. <laughs> the call is in phone box number, number 3. Thank you, Johnny. We'll make a Frenchman of you, yes, eh? No, <laughs> no, sir. No, perhaps an English Frenchman. <laughs> yes, Johnny. Well, let's see who wants me. Hello, Richard Rollinson here. The Honourable Richard Rollison. Yes, who is that speaking, please? Well, don't you recognise the voice, Mr. Rollison? Ah, so it's you. That's right. A pity we weren't able to meet the Goat and Compass. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Well, I hope you're not offering to sell me some more information. No, not this time, Mr. Rollison. Good. No, uh, this time I want to give you some advice. Good advice. And it's free. I'm listening. There's a plane leaves for London in 15 minutes. Now, my advice to you is, be on that plane, Mr. Rollison. Really? Yes. That would be best all round. And if I'm not? Oh, well, that's a different matter. You see, you're getting mixed up in some very tricky business, Mr. Rollison. Very dangerous business. And if you go on the way you are, well, I wouldn't like to answer for the consequences. No. You get out while you can. Be on that plane, Mr. Rollison. Yes. That will be best. For you. That was part five of The Toff and the Runaway Bride, a serial for radio dramatized by Roy Lomax, based on the novel by John Creasy, starring Terence Alexander as The Toff, with Robert Dorning as Jolly. Inspector Ellaby was played by Roger Gartland, Lady Gloria by Peggy Ann Wood, the Sergeant by David Graham, Police Constable by John Bull. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The producer was John Fawcett Wilson.